Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tyler, if you don't know me, nice to meet you. I am a rising 2L at Columbia Law School, and today I wanna to do a video I realized I never did a full look back at my 1L year, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today because my second year actually starts tomorrow and I don't wanna do my readings. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to do this video, just do an honest look back. I read everyone's comments, even if I don't respond to all of them, but just wanted to address some of the questions that I've seen come up throughout just this year and in the various videos and comments. So if you enjoy this type of content, uh, like and subscribe. I'm also on my own like petty journey to try and get more subscribers than the Columbia Law YouTube <laughs> channel page. But yeah, so join me in that petty endeavor. But anyway, uh, let's get into the video. So to start, I know I just want to get this one out of the way because people always comment and ask about cold calls and just for reference you know cold calls they might be different at different schools and they definitely vary by professor so but my ultimate advice is always just like don't worry about them I don't know even some of my most intimidating cold calls they just go the way they go at my school they're not graded you know so if you totally just mess up a cold call it's not the biggest deal in the world and I personally like to use them as little improv segments sometimes you know like if it's just gonna go bad like I'm gonna enjoy it like I pay to be there so whatever you know but if you're doing the reading you're prepared for class like that's the most you can do. Um, some professors will be asking you questions for 20 minutes, some professors will ask you one and move on. The clouds are moving, that's why it's getting a lot brighter in here. Um, and if you haven't seen my apartment tour, so actually my windows are right here, but that is live. So if you want to check that out, feel free. But yeah, so I'd say just, you know, it's not really helpful advice, I guess, but it's not the end of the world. Don't worry about them. You know, unless it's different at your school, then prepare as is appropriate, but you'll be okay. All right. And then I'm going to get onto classes. So, you know, I think the interesting thing about 1L you hear about is everyone's like, it is definitely the hardest year. Like now that you're through the thick of it, blah, blah, blah. blah. But now that I'm going into 2L, people are also saying 2L might be harder. So what's the truth? <laughs> like, I guess I'll let you know how it goes for me. But I think the things that are difficult about your first year of law school, um, at most schools, you don't pick your courses at all, right? So I think that can just be difficult because you're not choosing your professors like you might have in undergrad or you don't really have a choice in the types of classes you take or what your schedule looks like. So you really just have to roll with it. So I definitely say that that is one of the difficult things, but you know, everyone is going through that. And until the system or schools change the way they do things, that that is how it is. So yeah, so I'd say, you know, you'll make it through though. And usually you have like a mix of professors and hopefully you, you vibe with one or at least like a class more than another, but there's no guarantee. Let me change this lighting. Of course, right when I go to record this, it starts getting like super sunny but so I would say you know in my experience especially in my spring semester uh, every time I talked to upperclassmen about my professors they just said that we got some of the worst ones and that's beyond my elective professor because we did choose one class in the spring loved my elective professor she was great and I also chose her class because I knew I had pretty conservative professors and um, it was in criminal law, constitutional law, and property. And so I wanted something to like round out. <laughs> I did critical legal thought as my elective, so I wanted a class that would round out and give me a different framework to work with. So, um, you know, I will say, I think out of all my professors, constitutional law was by far the most like fringe views and was that made it the most difficult. And things always felt kind of scattered. I know some people probably enjoyed his class. That's totally fine, right? That's the other thing, like just because I didn't like a class or a professor doesn't mean you won't, you know, we are different people, but I'd say generally, Generally, people found that class to be the most challenging and frustrating, especially because we didn't cover things like the amendments, really. <laughs> like, we didn't learn about our rights, and the professor would make comments like, you'll learn about your rights in another class. And, you know, as someone who is the first lawyer in their family, I'm like, what class is that? <laughs> like, I thought that was this class, like, that we are required to take. Criminal law, I think... For me, I just didn't enjoy the subject matter of the course a lot. It's super intense. You know, I don't really find the criminal system to be the most effective. Uh, and I think the way the professor held discussions sometimes was just, she wasn't prepared to moderate a conversation about some of these difficult topics. So it would have been better if we just hadn't opened them up for discussion, but you know, it is what it is. Like everyone's adults, people speak their minds and whatever, it is what it is. And then I'd say property by far was like probably the most straightforward. The only reason it was difficult is because our professor wrote the case book and we read essentially the entire casebook. It was a lot of reading, so, you know, and every week it would be a new topic, so sometimes it was just difficult to keep up, but, you know, overall I'd say, like, it's one of those things, if, if someone asked me if I wish I had gone to a different school, I don't think I would, because I've met so many people at my school, like peers and other students that, and like friends I've made that I couldn't imagine becoming a lawyer and not knowing these people now, you know what I mean? So I definitely don't regret my decision. Like I still wanted to be in New York. I think that's been amazing. Now that I'm going into my second year and I have more choice, 
I get to choose the classes and like I've been applying and trying out for things and gotten into some of the programs I really wanted to do at Columbia. So, you know, I think it's one of those things it's it's a means to an end and I hate that, <laughs> right? Like I'm never the type of person who's like, yeah, just go with the flow. Let's just do what the system says. But, you know, unfortunately it's like really difficult to change and we've even talked to administration and there's just a lot of red tape and resistance, you know, so it's one of those things, but uh, hopefully they'll just continue to be improvements. Always advocate for yourself and your peers. Collective power is really important, but at the end of the day, these schools are businesses and they're they're running a business, so they're worried about their bottom line and also things that are important to me, right? Like job prospects after graduating and job placement and percentages and all that type of stuff. So I'd say ultimately, I'm really glad I came to this school. I definitely think there are critiques, right? Whether it's like some of the people who are professors there or just like how law school runs in general and access to resources. And that is something I'll say, you know, as a first gen student, that is one of my critiques of Columbia is I went there because of the really, you know, they boast of like their formalized career services and all those different offices that exist at the school. And so for me, I was like, great, that'll be super helpful. And honestly, I think the informal networks of talking to other students sometimes are a little more transparent than um, the objectives that maybe career services or student services or whoever has. Because, you know, like I said, it's still a business. So it is unfortunate, but you know, like I said, always advocate for yourself, pursue the resources you need, but also don't forget to talk to your peers who are going through the same thing or, or people a year or two older than you who have been through the process more recently maybe than someone in career services. So I definitely think just take advantage of all the resources law school has. Don't limit yourself to the formalized ones. I found that to be to my detriment, but learned a lot. So it's just one of those things, you know, talk to people, ask questions, don't be bashful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below if I can help with anything specifically, but you know, it's just, it, it feels like such a learning curve and, and so much of law school feels like gatekeeping but unfortunately that's the profession right and that's probably how it thrives and how people make money so yeah I would say though that that's just the lack of agency some of the professors and and the lack of transparency but I think that those issues could exist at any school honestly so that's also why I don't regret my decision and at the end of the day for me it made financial sense it made logistics sense where I wanted to be like New York was a city that my partner and I wanted to live in we really love the area we live in I love the people that I've met so yeah overall I'd say it's definitely net positive Another thing I wanted to talk about that I've seen in my comments is just different, I'll call them like worries or anxieties people have about school. Um, specifically Columbia, right? And so one of them is usually community or competitiveness. Um, I'll get DMs around like the culture of the school and things like that. And I would definitely say, um, you know, I've mentioned the amazing people I've met and I definitely think everyone finds their group in some sort of way. And if people do transfer, I usually think it's because, you know, law school is a professional school. And I will say different schools have resources for different things. Like if you want to be an academic, Yale, obviously one, it's a super hard school to get into. So duh. But like they are just like a great school to go to if you want to work in academia. And and have those credentials and do that type of research. You know, my school is very corporate focused. They're trying to do more public interest work and I definitely think the opportunities exist, but maybe the infrastructure could be improved. NYU I've heard is very public interest focused and they do a lot more like policy and social work. You know, every school has its thing. So I will say, I think Columbia, the, the professors are more research focused and maybe less teaching focused if you want to say that like like some schools really focus on pedagogy or like how students are learning from professors and there are definitely professors at Columbia who care about that but I do think like certain institutions just you know like they nurture that environment so if that's something that matters to you you know I think Berkeley is a school that like really boasts and talks about like how connected their professors are to the students so you know and also like the size of the program Columbia is on the larger side so it might be more difficult just to build those connections with professors so you know just really look at what the programs like speak to and the things that they care about and you know student to professor ratio and all that type of stuff and um, just so you can kind of like cater your experience to the school you're going to I will say that that's one of the things I've really enjoyed about about my school is I came here with a very clear purpose and like clear intention on the programs I wanted to do and that could be because I was out of school for five years right so I do feel like I've been able to get what I wanted out of the university and I think that's really important so you know and even if you're just out of undergrad, just doing some reflection on like, what did I enjoy about undergrad? What are the things I hope to get out of law school, whether it's academics or social or networking or or whatever it is, you know, a, sp a specific program or a certain specialty of law. Just do some reflection and then like, no matter what your choice is, every choice will probably have improvements to be made, but at least you know you're getting what you wanted out of the school. And I think, you know, that's really important because school is expensive and um, you should be able to reach your goals <laughs> through going to these institutions. So yeah, so finding clarity on that, I think is really important. But overall, I think the community at Columbia is great. Like, you know, I had some family issues come up for semester and everyone in my section was so willing to share notes and like I didn't feel like anyone was altering 
notes or doing anything mischievous like like everyone is so happy to collaborate and I don't it's funny because I don't know where like the competitive maybe it's just from being in New York and people assume like people in New York are competitive but um I've actually found that not to be very true like coming from California especially where everyone thinks everyone's chill and like vibey which I guess is true but the way I kind of describe it is like people from California are nice and like have good manners but they're not really like kind like they won't go out of their way to help you um, but people in New York are maybe <laughs> they'll, they'll be standoffish but they're kinder and like they'll help you if you're like lost on the subway or whatever like maybe they won't have a really welcoming tone but they will be helpful <laughs> and so you know I think that those are just some interesting differences that I've tried to like vet through people from both coasts and I'd say it's kind of true <laughs> honestly but you know, obviously everyone will have a different experience, but I've really found people in New York to be super open and like, like down to help or like if you have questions, like open to answering your questions. But you know, it is just like an exhausting city. Everyone's like taking this metro or like the subway and everyone's tired and it's humid sometimes or it's cold sometimes and you're like commuting an hour or whatever. So people are just, I think, very like diligent with their time because <laughs> it's a limited resource, right? So I don't know. So I think, you know, community wise, it's been really great. Like there's different affinity groups that I've made friends through, made friends with people in my sex just made friends with random people you meet out and I think definitely after your first year because there is so much structure and you know like I said you don't really choose your schedule your first year it can be difficult at first but I'm really hoping especially through the next two years to capitalize even more on like the social like relationships I can build with people and just get to know more people outside of my section even so you know it's kind of like a gradual process like you go through law school and you kind of like take it step by step and it evolves and changes just as you as you complete different parts of your journey so be patient it'll be good it'll work out I think everyone at Columbia has been like really nice. So if that's something you're worried about, I wouldn't, I wouldn't super worry about it. But <laughs> unless you're competitive and like really cutthroat, then like don't come here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can come here if you want, but all right. And I, I think the last thing I'll touch on that I've seen in my comments about, you know, Columbia, but also I think law school in general is people just being like stressed about the difficulty of classes, which I think one comes from like movies and media and, and it is a professional school, right? And so you're anxious around like, I don't know, like even I've been out of school, right? And so I'm like, oh, I'm going back to school. Is that going to be super difficult? People coming right out of undergrad, they're going to be like, do I have enough experience? Like everyone has their own things that they're worried about or anxious about. But I will say at the end of the day, you know, law school is just reading <laughs> like it's fine I mean some of the cases can be heavy and weird but at the end of the day you are just reading it's reading and writing you know you'll get used to reading cases you'll understand how to navigate through a case you'll be looking at the facts you'll understand why certain professors are assigning cases like even if you're just looking at the headline and the syllabus and it has a certain topic and you're like oh okay like this is probably the theory I should be focusing on or like we'll be asked about this or maybe this is like the foundational case for that theory like you'll be able to connect those dots and see how things are moving especially as you get into it but I know everyone is going to go through their own process right and people are going to like read and underline and, and write all these crazy notes and do these outlines and like that's super fine and if you keep doing that because it works for you that's great if you change how you read the cases and change how you summarize like that's also totally fine you know, it also depends on your professor. Does your professor care about details? Does your professor care about big picture? Like, what do they want you to take away? Um, so it's gonna look different for everyone and just like getting into it. But I will say it's reading, it's writing. You don't have to be intimidated. You'll get through it. But yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna wrap up the video. Those are most of the like the topics I've seen in my comments and kind of a reflection on my 1L year. So hopefully my experience is helpful to you. If you have other questions or comments, concerns, whatever, put them down in the comments below. I try to respond to all of them unless they're weird. Those ones I, <laughs> I just like ignore. But if you do actually have questions, like feel free to put them down there. Feel free to DM me, like, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And also, like I said, I have my petty personal agenda of just getting more subscribers than the law school YouTube. I just think it would be fun, right? I don't know like especially if I can do it before I graduate I'd be like you know in my time at Columbia I've done all these things and then also beat their subscriber count yeah but be on the lookout for other videos I'm hoping to do more vlogs and stuff honestly this upcoming semester I only have a few classes because I'm doing more experiential work so you know hopefully I can do some vlogs and show like how different 1L to 2L is you know it's a lot of reading and a lot of classes your first year and, and now I'm doing more experiential work I'll be working with clients and so I'm, it's honestly crazy how different my schedule is like I probably won't be on campus for the full week like which is great I'm happy about that but yeah and if you want more lifestyle content around New York happy to do that as well like it's so crazy I've only been here a year and I feel so settled and like I know where my stop are on the one and like how to transfer to wherever and like get to Brooklyn and I don't know like dumb things that people who lived here forever probably like Tyler stop being so cringe but just crazy you know crazy for someone who like moved across the country so yeah so I hope you liked the video hope you enjoyed and um have a good school year if you're starting school or like best of luck on your LSAT or wherever you are in your journey so see you in the next video <laughs> bye